Instead, they're sitting in the driver's seat, glass falling down, many of them saved by covers like this one. Chrome rubber is essentially shredded up tires that are used on thousands of athletic fields across the country, including this one in Fairfax County. Did you rape Susan Shannon? I, I did not rape Susan Shannon. We're talking about a lot of missing money, hundreds of thousands. Can you tell us what happened to her or did you spend it? Do you think the government has failed the American people on this issue? Absolutely. After seven on your side started asking questions and social media spread the word, the VA reviewed Sergeant Hunter's evaluation. Seven on your side getting action after asking why this serious discipline isn't posted. Virginia's Department of Social Services said they're going to start adding it to this website. Hospital records that seven on your side is taking a look at call that the result of a fall. But the family says the pictures tell a different story. Six thousand phone calls to poison control centers because of these pods. And you mentioned the confusion there. Look at them. For kids, they're squishy, they're brightly colored. We'd like to introduce you to what may be the world's best dog. DB doesn't bark, doesn't bite. We know he's special, but now we've got the paperwork to prove it. I didn't realize the application process was this ridiculous. DB, with the help of the Seven on Your Side I team, went through the process of becoming an official emotional support animal. It's the same process that lets real dogs, pigs, and even turkeys come on board the planes you fly for free. Does this seem like a system that is ripe for fraud and abuse? Unfortunately, it is, and the evidence tends to bear that out. The I-Team tested the system, discovering a big problem with the Air Carrier Access Act. In 2003, it was changed to let people with disabilities take support pets on planes. When you start accepting stuffed animals, as emotional support animals, there's something wrong in the system and it needs to be fixed immediately. The system allows for-profit companies to sell registrations to anyone who claims they have a disability. No government screening though for the companies, no double checking of the people who apply. All you have to do is click here to fly with your emotional support animal. Boom. Click. We registered DB using a company called the National Service Animal Registry, which says its services are aimed only at providing legitimately disabled persons with ID and product to minimize hassles and discrimination. The company tells customers ordering those products does not make them legally disabled. But all you have to do on the web is click a box and say you have any one of a host of problems, including fear of flying or stress. We did, then agreeing DB could be controlled in public. Show no aggression toward humans. I think we're good there. Clicked another box, paid 65 bucks, and he was done. All right, DB, small big. We submitted a photo of our stuffed dog for his official papers, and we're ready to fly. For another 50 bucks, we even got him a vest to make him look official. The company even called to verify right, DB's size based on his picture. It undermines the whole system. D.C. resident Chris Tegler says he already struggles with a system designed to support people like him with actual disabilities. I've been cussed out on the bus. I've been accused of why do you have a service dog? You're not blind. His dog, Roxy, is for the issues you can't see. He's got a letter that lets him take Roxy wherever he travels. But Tegler knows those aren't hard to get. There should be more oversight. The feds cracked down in 2008, allowing airlines to require actual documentation from a licensed mental health professional or doctor if you want to take a support animal on board. But guess what? We bought one of those, too. Wow, that's a lot of questions. After paying $180, I answered 11 sets of questions online, honestly, with no one to verify my answers. I have definitely stayed in bed all day. Then I spent exactly 14 minutes on the phone with a counselor during two calls. Okay, it's official. I am considered emotionally and mentally disabled. Congrats, DB. We're legit now. One day later, I got a message and a medical letter signed by a counselor I never spoke to. It came courtesy of Chilhowee Psychological Services in Colorado, the service we paid, which just happens to work out of the same address as the National Service Animal Registry. The company says it doesn't disclose their relationship online, but will confirm it if asked. It uses a stock photo for its staff, and its parent company is registered in another state, with its business activity listed as manufacturer of leather motorcycle accessories. Josie Sturman, ABC 7 News. Mm -hmm. Exploding airbags, engines that could suddenly turn off, defects that could impact your steering and cause a crash. 
Those are open recalls we found in cars being auctioned off to the public by the federal government. We have a higher standard that we should be held to when it comes to uh, our government. This is Congressman Mark Meadows, chairman of the Government Operations Subcommittee under House Oversight. He is vowing to look into the stunning findings of a circuit investigation that turned up hundreds of cars for sale by the General Services Administration. Cars with dangerous problems that apparently haven't been fixed. It's too early to tell who should be held accountable, but certainly someone should be held accountable. And we're not going to stop until we get satisfaction that the problem has been addressed. In addition to the auctioning of recalled cars, Meadow says he'll be contacting the GSA with another focus. If there's a recall and they've been in our fleet and we haven't repaired them, then there's there's another issue about the health and safety of potential people who have been using the, the vehicle prior to us uh, disposing of those. The car Circa found up for auction had been leased out by the GSA and used by 23 different government agencies. Army, Navy, Marines, Homeland Security, the State Department, even the Executive Office of the President. It's not known which specific cars were driven with active recalls, except for the law enforcement cars we found on this Maryland lot. Some of them had service tags that imply they were on the road for as long as three years after a recall was issued. We have a great deal of respect for police officers. If there's a recall on an officer's car, fix it. The GSA did not respond to specific questions we had about the use of recalled cars by federal workers. When it comes to auctioning them off, GSA did warn buyers there could be recalled cars in the bunch, telling them to check with local dealers or another arm of the feds, NHTSA, to know for sure. Congressman Meadows says that's just not enough will take immediate action on this. We have to be a lot more detail oriented in our disclosure as a federal agency and, and I'm hopeful that uh, because of the, the work that you and your team have, has done that we'll start to see some real progress uh, with GSA in, in the near future. Charred backpacks, blistered water bottles, and blackened notebooks. A science lesson captured as a tragic moment in history. I think the whole thing was just a freak accident. A classroom accident witnessed by Woodson High School student Nick Dashe and photographed down to the last grisly detail by investigators from Virginia Occupational Safety and Health. Their report, obtained exclusively by the Seven on Your Side I team, shows the aftermath of an October experiment that injured five students, two with serious burns, three others with minor injuries, including Nick. All chaos broke loose, I guess. Chaos that followed a demonstration of the so-called rainbow experiment. Since 2014, the controversial science lesson has resulted in at least six mishaps across the country, with more than a dozen students and teachers injured. That's according to the U.S. Chemical Safety Board, which has called for schools to stop doing the rainbow experiment with an open flame and flammable solvents. If safer alternatives exist for this demonstration, and no more children should get hurt. Evidence of the pain caused at Woodson can be seen all over this Fairfax County classroom. Markers show the places where students sat, the unlucky ones ending up in melted chairs, wearing clothing and shoes turned into ashes. The problem is since it was ethanol, it was hot and it was like sticky so the few people it did hit it hit like like it got on them it was more difficult to put out it was burning hotter than like a regular flame flames fueled by ethyl alcohol according to the Vosch report it says the teacher involved poured the chemical and lit it when she later added more ethanol to refuel the fire simply squeezing the bottle sent vapor out as a concentrated burst shooting flames horizontally toward her students it almost looks like a blanket the unexpected result of an experiment the teacher told investigators she'd done many times over the years with no problems. It's jokingly mentioned in classroom worksheets, but has no specific curriculum instructions for how to perform it, according to the report. And with appropriate protective equipment in place and in use that day, no citations or violations were given by the state.